Good morning and welcome to the St. Leon Bloodlands Armenian Cathedral. And for all of, all of you joining us online, we are broadcasting from Burbank here with a small group that is assembled and we know that there's a larger group watching us. We're remembering two beautiful souls today in our Armenian church tradition on the day after Christmas, which we celebrate on January 6th, the day after, is specifically designated as remembrance, a day for us to remember those who have passed. Because in our faith, we don't believe that life ends at the grave, but there is a continuity of life. It's not just something that is in a place outside of this world, but also here in this world, in the memories that we have of these beautiful people who have passed on. I want to welcome you on behalf of His Eminence, Archbishop Ogon Derbeya of the Primate of the Western Diocese, who has made this opportunity for us when he heard about Gabriel and Katie Jay's passing. He, was, he insisted that we as an Armenian community, as an Armenian church, open our doors for the larger community that's out there um, to to say thanks, to say thanks for all that they have done, not only for the world, but for humanity. As a Christian church, we look at these two lives, Gabriel and Katie Jays, and it's truly the work of God here on earth. And we'll be talking about that in a few minutes. Right now, we're going to be doing the Requiem service. It involves prayers which, and hymns, which we will do in our traditional Armenian language, after which we will have a speaker, Lina Adushin, from IAP to share some reflections, and I will conclude our reflections. Uh, at this time, I'm going to be inviting uh, the soloist and the deacon to join me in prayer. This is what we call the Hokihan piece, or the prayers for the requiem. And we ask them to join in. in of course, it's in Armenian, but we're going to speak Gabriel and KKJ's language today, which is the language of love. And I think it'll transcend the language barrier. I think we'll all understand what's going on. So if you'll join me, we're going to be starting off with the Lord's Prayer, which I'll recite, after which there'll be a meeting and so In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those, against, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Give ye us calamut ya, the stead of a chess sword, and God gets away for me. Portunia parporia bokoya bokwinsons hope, as you may wish to have in Yanis Havidanis. Amen. Let's 
Father of compassion and God of all consolation, who consoles us in all of our sorrow. You strike but also heal, and you never let your creatures out of your care. Give to them, O Lord, the spirit of prudence, the spirit of consolation. May those whose hearts are stricken with grief be consoled by you. And especially in the passing of Gabriel and Katie J, may their memory and the love that they shared here in this world be for us a healing and a wound for our sorrows, so that strengthened in hope of your glories, they may recover, we may recover from the sorrow of our bereavement and may glorify your great dominion now and always to the end of the ages. Oh. 
my Son of God, forbearing and compassionate, appitying your love as our Creator, upon the souls of your servants who are in rest, especially upon the souls of your servant and handmaiden, Gabriel and Katie J, for whom we offer these prayers. Be mindful of them on the great day of the coming of your kingdom. Make them worthy of mercy. Number and glorify them in the company of your saints at your right hand. For you are Lord and creator of all, judge of the living and of the dead. To you is befitting glory, dominion, and honor, now and always, to the end of the ages. Amen. Please be seated. I want to thank Lauren Sassian, the soloist of Deacon Rafi Mikhaila, for participating in this requiem prayer service. This is in our tradition, not only on the day after Christmas, but also it happens to be a tradition that we have 40 days following a person's passing because it gives us time to be reconciled with a reality that is difficult. Reality that physically they aren't here, but very much in spirit, we keep them alive. And uh, this tradition is something which, in this short little requiem service, has been a service that has consoled and kept up people for the last 2,000 years, understanding that death, the body, the body and death are united just as the soul and God are united and our souls do live. They continue to live. And I think every one of you who are joining us right now on the internet, every one of us feels the presence of Gabriel and Katie J. Not memories, the beautiful things that they did in this world. And right now it's my pleasure to invite Lena Adisha, who is a volunteer with IAC. His Eminence Archbishop, Hovnan Derberi, Father Vasquez, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak about our beloved friends, Gabriel and Katie J, who I knew through the organization I act. They were two of the most influential and remarkable people I've met, and their tragic passing deeply affects so many people around the world. To know Gabriel and Katie J is to have an origin story. To meet them is to swiftly understand how unique they are in the world and how every interaction you have with them changes you for the better. For me, I had a chance meeting with one of IAC's board members who introduced me to Katie J. And I couldn't believe my luck that here in the south of Los Angeles, down the street from my house, there was this small organization doing big things to help genocide survivors worldwide. I learned that IAC's vision for the world for the dignity, humanity, and agency of conflict affected people are recognized, affirmed, and supported. They stood in solidarity with people who the world often forgot, and they showed up for them time and time again. And as the granddaughter and great granddaughter of Armenian genocide survivors, I felt a deep calling to see how I could help I act and join them to support communities affected by mass atrocities. What I didn't know in those early days was just how impacted I would be and how inspired I would be by Gabriel and Katie J themselves, and how much wisdom they imparted on their family, friends, and the IAC family around the globe. Once I spent time with them and dug into understanding their organization, 
and learn more about what they had accomplished, what they wanted to accomplish, and how they did it, and how they made people feel every step of the way. Gabriel and Katie J knew that it's human nature to need connection to one another. They were very intentional about making interactions count. And they had a genuine way of making people feel heard. And they did this at all levels. This was a cornerstone of their work, making volunteers like myself feel heard and feel a sense of belonging. And by doing so, they taught us what it feels like to have your own humanity so fully acknowledged how essential it is to our existence and how necessary it is for all human beings around the world to feel this way too. They wouldn't settle for less than dignity for all. And when I began volunteering for IAC, I had been thinking mostly about programs with refugees in Africa and Greece. And I soon learned they had a strong relationship with the Armenian community through Father Bastian and through Gabriel's nomination for the Aurora Prize. But I had no idea how this would evolve during my time volunteering with IACT. For the Armenians out there, try to remember those feelings we all shared during the Artsakh War. This time where we felt such a huge sense of loss and despair for how we would move forward. In this horrific time for our community, we wondered is anyone paying attention to us? And what surprised me, although in hindsight it's no surprise, is that this small humanitarian group that I happened to join prioritized Armenia. Katie, Katie Jane and Gabriel were paying attention. And they rallied their friends and their colleagues to all learn about the Arts of War. And in a matter of months, they partnered with the Aurora Humanitarian Initiative and Gold Armenia to create new programs for Artsakh children, traveling to Bodhi's last July. It was stunning in the best way possible. They cared so much, and they did something about it. They took action. And that's what they did. In times when communities felt lost and in despair, Wondering how they could move forward from tragedy, Gabriel and Katie J dug in, got creative, and showed up. They did this in Armenia, and they did it with refugees in Greece, Chad, Cameroon, Tanzania, and the Central African Republic. Sometimes I wondered how they could just jump right into settings that were so different from our comforts here at home and were at times dangerous and risky. They seemed not only steadfast and resolved, but just so excited and hopeful. Even if they didn't know exactly how something would work out, they knew they could figure it out. And in one of our recent IAC calls, Gabriel's brother so eloquently said, it's because they did everything with love. They led with love. And that's just it. When you lead with love, you can't go wrong. And you always make the world better in big ways and in small ways. Love was their compass. They deeply understood this universal principle, and they lived it every day, moment to moment. I was fortunate enough to participate in their activist training. And one of the ways we started our discussion was to talk about movement. Why movement? Well, since IAC works with refugees and displaced people, people who are on the move because they are forced to, and maybe sometimes if they have the opportunity to do so. So we spent time reflecting on our own movement stories to help us connect with this aspect of a refugee's reality. And you know, we Armenians, we understand movement. We understand what it means to be scattered around the globe, building new lives and starting over. I shared my own family's movement story following the genocide, and also love listening to other people's stories as well. Gabriel and PJ created sacred spaces like this to share and to connect with each other. 
and by embracing our own stories and realities. KJ and Gabriel helped plant the seeds for us to think about movement in the lives of conflict affected people. And you know, when I'm realizing these conversations about movement, what's the one thing that is transportable when so much movement, instability, and uncertainty are around you? What can you always count on? Love. That universal principle that Gabriel and KJ embraced and embodied so fully. It's always transportable, and it moved through them, and it moved to their family, their friends, and to the refugee communities they work with. It moved from them to us, and will continue on as we carry their legacy forward into our daily lives and out into the world. And from this love that ripples through all of us, hope can grow. To quote Kelly, Kelly Arnell in the children's book, The Girl Who Drank the Moon, hope is those first tiny buds that form at the end, at the very end of winter. How dry they look, and how cold they are in our fingers, but not for long. They grow big, then sticky, then swollen, and then the whole world is green. I will always be grateful for KJ Gabriel's love, courage, generosity, energy, joy, intellect, humility, and laughter, and for turning their boundless compassion into action. The world is forever changed for the better because of them. Thank you. Thank you. You brought a smile to our face because you think in this tragedy and you think about the love that they had. There was a lot of smiling that went on. I'd like to share with you just a couple of thoughts today because they were both friends of ours personally and longtime friends. And I think when we get together in a church setting or when we contemplate issues of death, it's normal, it's natural for us to be thinking about the bigger picture. What is this all about? What happened? Especially when death comes so unexpectedly as it did for Gabriel and Katie J. What happens? What is life about? And so many people. So many people have different experiences that they want to share and tell you. And some of them are spooky. Some of them are very scary about what's going to happen and what you have to do. Jesus brings it down to such an easy, easy little thing. He says that at the end, the king will say, he will say to the people, he says, come to me, blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. So what's the requirement? I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. The righteous will answer. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked or clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? I mean, if Jesus is out there and he's homeless, of course, my home is open to Jesus. Jesus, come in, I'll give you a sandwich, I'll feed you. I will hug you. I love you, Jesus. When did we see you like that? And Jesus will answer, In as much as you did it for the least of my brothers, you did it for me. KDJ, Gabriel, 
They did it for the least of the brothers. Darfur, Chad, and the list goes on, and it eventually ended up in Armenia this last summer. People that everybody had forgotten. Homeless, hungry, at the celebration of life, my brother Javier mentioned to everybody, gave away the secret that we met in prison. I am proud that we met in prison. Because this is what it's about. There's nothing bigger than this. It's about us living and learning to get along with one another. When Jesus was born, there was no spectacular thing. It was just a small little baby. And what was the message? Peace on earth. We go towards one another. Why are we complicating it? Peace and goodwill. And Katie J. gave me over this message. It was instilled in them. I met Gabriel's mother, I know where it comes from. Instilled from early childhood on, this, on the knee. Like it's not about up there, it's about up over here. And we were the fortunate ones. You see, I'm mentioning this because there's a tendency for us to come to these kind of services. I'm going to Gabriel and Katie's service. It's not about them, they passed on. And they have led that life that God has asked each and every one of us. It's not about them, it's about us. If you attend the service, if you have a memory, I'm going to pay my last respects. Don't pay your last respects with, in, a, in a church, in a grave site. Pay your last respects by living what they did. And that's the challenge today. That's why during the service, the requiem service, I read the passage, Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. If it does die, it produces much grain. Jesus was talking, of course, about himself, but the same is true about Gabriel and Katie J. They were these single seeds that came. They died, they didn't die in an accident. They died many, many years ago when they said, our lives are not about us. It's not about me, it's about our world. And they sacrifice. They gave of themselves. In our Armenian tradition, you see all the beautiful crosses. The heart, Hallmark made that into a symbol of love. For us, the cross is a symbol of love. It's a symbol of sacrifice and dedication to give yourself. Give her the DJ. They knew what they were talking about. Now they turn his heart. They've fallen, they've died. How do we blossom? Blossom with the love that they have. And I think we can all do that. I am it. Their baby, we will take care of them. We need to be part of it. Not just writing out checks and stuff. Sure, don't worry, don't get me wrong. Don't stop writing because you say, oh, the priest said, don't write checks. No, write but beyond that taking on the missions that I am. Looking around and seeing what would talk to Gabriel and KJ. Looking and seeing the naked in the world, the homeless, looking out and seeing in our own neighborhood, not just in the third world country, the intolerance that we have towards people, the hatred that we have, and how we can overcome these things with a simple act of love. Lena said it so beautifully when she reflected on the love. It's not that complicated. So thank you, Gabriel and Katie J. for sharing that love. Thank God that he allowed us to have these two examples in our hearts. And I want to thank all of you for being part of really a moment in history. They really are. You said it beautifully. This is impacting the whole world. And we may not understand it because we know them, we play with them, we laugh with them, but their loss is a big one for the world, but let's not make it a loss that is we cannot recover from. Each and every one of us has the talents, the gifts, that we can share the love that they had with others. So God rest their soul. On behalf of Archbishop Olnan, the entire Armenian church, 
that has been with the army people on gratitude to, to Gabriel and Jay, the Sauron family, and everyone who was concerned about caring and helping others. May God bless you so May God's comfort come to us with the beautiful memories that they made. We have a tradition of starting each and every one of our services with the Lord's Prayer. We started it, we're going to sing it in Armenian. And as I said earlier, we're going to sing it in Armenian because it's not about Armenia, it's, it's about a language of love that Gabriel and Katie J spoke. And so I'm asking all of you, wherever you may be right now, as we sing the Lord's Prayer to hide the head, just sing it, pray it, and pray it with a, a smile in your heart, knowing that these two people did not pass away in vain. They have given us the inspiration to continue and to do what is important. If you'll join me, Warren, and uh, we can drop in the listen together. Original and Jesus Christos. Blessed by the grace of the Holy Spirit, go in peace. May the Lord Jesus be with you always. Amen. God bless their soul.